Next part is the cash flows part. Hey, once you develop these project assumptions with the research, your own research, then the rest of the part is very simple. You put the sales here from the income statement we collected. Now let's just drag it down. Then you got all this information. Okay, the finance income state information. But again, we are not going to use this income statement of the last year because, because this is not in the part of this free cash flows. Free cash flows is starting from year one to year five. Okay? Now, the sales is going to increase by 10% of the first year. Okay? Again, here, all the spreadsheet, spreadsheet, you don't put any hard numbers. Because when we change these assumptions, project assumptions, all the operating cash flows or those spreadsheet will be changing automatically. Okay? So we increase based on this percentage. Okay? And then cost of the revenue. Now we will align this 62% to the current year, the sales. Okay? Then then this will be now KTA that way. Then SGNA percentage SGNA assumptions is calculated again percentage of sales. Let's drag. Then R and D also calculated. Sales percentage. So we got it. And then if it is 69, then let's drag. Other revenue 1.6% sales. Interest. Okay, interest the we assume that uh, the debt uh, will be uh, maintaining, uh, and then the cost of the debt also the same. So we use this cost of uh, average coupon rate of a bond times. Let's just assume that we have the same uh, level of debt. Then it should be the same like this. I think it was seven point two point five percent. Okay, and then we calculated this apt plus other revenue minus interest. Let's track. The tax is calculated this times tax rate 14.4% assuming that this effect the tax rate uh, will be continuing. Oops. We need to use this the dollar function so that when we drag to the right the same result. Then the income is just the final result. Then add back interest, add back interest after tax. Net income. Oh, add back interest. Where is the interest? There we go. Interest. We add back this interest. Then add back depreciation. The add back interest after tax means that this is also part of the uh, the cash flows toward the investors. Okay, anyway, we are going to subtract the debt portion. We are now calculating 
the free cash flows of the firm. That's why we include this interest after tax as well. So the depreciation as well. Depreciation was not extra cash out, but we deducted. That's why we add back the depreciation. So how much was the depreciation? 24% of the fixed asset. 24% of the fixed asset. So where do you get the fixed asset? Right. It's a little bit complicated because now we are using the fixed asset percent as a percentage of the sales, right? So this 24% times 13% times the sales. Okay. That is the, uh, the depreciation depreciation of the year one then let's drag to the right so we got this depreciation every year and then operating operating cash flows net income plus add back interest and add back depreciation operating cash flows we have got next the cash flows in net operating working capital cash flows in net operating working capital percentage 14 percent times sales let's drag it to the right then what we want to get is actual cash out right actual cash in, cash down so when we increase operating working capital, so that is the cash down, right? And then we put this, all the increase as a cash out. And then the fixed asset, how much was the fixed asset? 13% times sales. And then this, the fixed asset is going to increase along with the sales increase because fixed asset is the source to make the revenue every year then also if the company increase the fixed asset that means that cash out every year cash out okay and then we've done we've done all the cash flows calculations so from year one, again, the year zero is not the free cash flows. Year one, we put this, all this cash flows into the one free cash flows of the firm year one. So we just sum this up. Let's drag to the right. And then we got this, all this free cash flows. So terminal value at the end of year five, uh, considering uh, from year six to forever you may remember horizontal value so we use this amount using the dividend discount model do you remember right times one plus now we are using this permanent gross rate divided by the WAC minus permanent gross rate right and then we have this terminal value at the end of year five. Now, let's just combine these two so that we gather all, okay, we gather all this, the total free cash flows of the firm. Now, the intrinsic value of the common stock, intrinsic value of the common stock is that now we're using the MPV function, the rate, we use this discount rate, and then drag it, here we go. And then we have the, um, the enterprise value of the firm. Um, how much is that? We have $1.9 trillion. And then company has the debt, debt, for it, debt and preferred stock. 
there you go the market value and then integer value of the common stock is 1.8 trillion dollars the common stock outstanding shares we have the 17 uh, billion shares we linked and then finally we got the target price based on uh, this F model one of the DCF model FCFF how to get it this integer value of common stock divided by number of shares so $107 is the target price then how much is the market price of this uh, the company Apple stock where did you get it right here you go oh we have different date okay anyway let's use this so the market price the recent market price was $121 right so expect the gain and return expect if this we assume that this market price is not the intrinsic value actual value is $1.7 so we expect a kind of a loss how much is the loss so this is the standard so if we invest this stock we'll lose $13 is $13 in the percentage is oh sorry this percentage of this if we invest 121 so this so 11 percent 11 percent 11.28 percent is going to be expected rate of return on the common stock or the investment okay but again, it depends on your assumptions. If you assume like permanent growth rate, like uh, maybe maybe uh, five point three percent, then it's going to be a little bit higher, right? Or if you calculate the WAC of this your stock, like let's say like eight percent, eight percent, then what happened? Ooh. The intrinsic value of a common stock is very, very high. Okay. Again, the WAC is the most most sensitive indicators, most of the, the sensitive factors that uh, determines the intrinsic value. That's why we spend a lot of time to measure this WAC. Okay. Okay. And then see you in the next video clip. Uh, talking about the target price based on relative method and the financial ratio analysis. Bye-bye.